right now. Hey, guys. You can count on me for the snacks, Neil. Don't worry. I'm with you. No, the snacks are expensive. I'm with you. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Brenberg. I'm Jackie DeAngelis. I'm Taylor Riggs. Welcome to the Big Money Show. Thanks very much for that. Good to see you. Well, Wall Street watch the tape of Jay Powell and see if his hair was smoldering maybe oh. a little bit. It might have been smoldering a little bit. Stephanie, great stuff. Uh -huh. Always good to see you. Thank you so much. Meanwhile, I'm add to panic that maybe shouldn't just a be. a word of caution, too. We've seen this before. I did want to make those trades or did want to sell. You're, you're locking in your losses. Um, and yep. so ultimately, I mean, nobody has a crystal ball to say how much worse this is going to get or if it's going to rebound and start to get better. Taylor, earlier you said you think today may could be the day that there's a washout and, and we yeah. sort of regain uh, some equilibrium. So ultimately, I think people just have to, to watch this and take it with a grain of salt and a deep breath, too. Yeah. But also interesting is Apple, because Apple plunged He gave it. us some hints. So back in May, he was asked that question. You have so you much just said, we heard from Stephanie, right, that we just have wiped out we're all of those May. things and we're back. So <laughs> is that sort of that fresh buying opportunity now that we've taken a lot of froth out of the market? This is that classic investor, Brian, that likes to buy value stocks that are cheaper right. than they were the day before, but have really good stories to tell well and he can park that cash get like get in on the interest when rate. he's keeping powder dry what it tells me is what we're seeing today may not be the end of what we've started to he see he buys today. when no one else will but ultimately, so I'll say this, too, just asking some analysts and people who are invested in the market on the spending and they are more cautious. Ultimately, long term, they still believe there's value in AI. So it'll be interesting to see when you kind of take this out on a timeline. Yeah. Well, if you're looks. if you're feeling FOMO this summer, maybe you can go back and maybe have a second bite at the apple. Yeah, we'll see. All right. The middle of Role. My feeling is it's sort of the fundamentals of the market and the economy, global growth, it's the election, and it's also this geopolitical unrest, which really does tie back to this administration, which in some ways has led us here by not really standing by Israel from the get-go October 7th last year. So I want to get your take on this, where you see it going next. I mean, they've told us, Iran has said they will do something, probably today. They uh, made it clear, uh, the foreign minister, we don't care about civilian bomb shelters. They, they understand that cities could be under attack. But do we deal with the pain now mm. or do we deal with it worse? Now that we're on a war footing, we might mm. be more... Uh, use our public issues that we're facing here at home. There's an interesting soundbite of what the current administration has been saying about the economy. Take a listen to what they're saying. Are Americans buying it, especially after Friday's jobs report, definitely showed a cooling of this labor market. In the fundamentals, Trump welcomes not. when people say, would you want to take my four years or the last three and a half right. years? Go right. ahead. You make the call. This right. is not some hypothetical businessman who thinks he'd be talking about what you guys are talking about. Right. The fundamentals of track people's record, lives. Track record, track record, track yeah. record. Compare it. Yep. It's not hypothetical. It's real. Well, let's hope he can do that. Yeah. Do you think we should get him on, like, Palladium or Platinum or anything? I know he wanted to get in on the commodity. I would, like, I would like to walk to you. Is that your going away price? <laughs> Do I get Palladium as an no. exit? Have some gift? copper as the, you're going the, away. The big, money, the big Money Show home game. My <laughs> gold bar is a lot cheaper today. Oh, there it is. It's some cheaper. It is. It's still expensive. Right. Ryan, Precious kill me. Metal. Before I end up owing you something, you <laughs> right. have to go. All nice right. to see you. I'm going to leave, you. but not on camera. Okay. We will continue. with us with more. Jacob, talk to me. We talk about the wonky twos, tens. What that means is, is the recession here or not? What are you hearing? What are you seeing? Yeah, the recession right Parts now is are what's going to happen in the election. Are we going to have Trump or a Harris presidency? Can't control that per se. And also there's this geopolitical instability. So if I'm looking at the Nasdaq today down almost 3% and I'm sort of itching to buy, is today that I buy or should I, should I wait? My answer is so boring. You should be buying. I <laughs> so really appreciate it. Let's get back to some of the individual movers Maybe on these. You want to think about adding to your positions. There will be growth in America again. It, I promise. Can we talk about adding a little bit? We have a great the chart. mistakes I think I've made was not buying during the pandemic because it seemed so scary, like the world was ending. It never ends. We end up doing well again. It might take time to rebound, but if time's on your side, then be in it to win it. Time is on your side is a good Rolling Stones song, too. All right. Coming up. Back on Tiffany purchases this year, I can tell you that, but there's a lot of other cutbacks. Don't out tell there. your wife that. No, I shouldn't say that. Lindsay, great stuff. Good to see you. Good to see you.
No kids need certain things. They know they want certain things. It makes them happy and excited to start the school year, and they're willing to either go into debt or pull back on the, the food budget, the family budget, in order to do that. Again, this is a byproduct right. of what happens in an economy where it was so knee-jerk, right? You, yep. Rates could have risen slowly if the fundamentals were strong, but because we spent so much, the government just spent and spent so much, ultimately Jerome Powell had to act. Some notebooks when we went to school. I've got school age kids. You got to buy them all this electronic stuff. Like mm. you've got to get the, the point is um, not only do we have less money to spend, but I think we're because of like the technology environment, mm. we're having to spend so much more. Well, and I really like the comments that Lindsay was saying that we've focused a lot about the low income consumer, but we haven't, I hadn't really seen yet until I heard it from her and mm -hmm. from the earnings calls this week and the last week where it's now creeping up into that middle income consumer. So if you used to be able to afford that, a multiple thousand dollar off-road vehicle now that middle income consumer is saying no that's very different from a five below or a mcdonald's low end consumer who's been saying i'm stretched yeah. and now that that is starting to climb up the ladder that makes me a little right. nervous. And remember, the ultimate, the super wealthy, they're not going to pull back really on anything. This doesn't impact them. It's the poor and that middle class person that you're talking about, Taylor, that this administration said they would help. And yet they're being squeezed the most. Yep, good point. All right, this is also just in the State Department. Break it down, Kelly. Hey, it's good to be with you guys. Yeah, that's right. A lot of uncertainty, a lot of questions regarding are we entering a recession or is this more of a market correction? So just to orient you where we are right now, uh, we've got the down, a Dow, if we could see it. Right, let's see, 920 points. Uh, NASDAQ is down 476, S&P 500 down 135. That's well off of session lows, okay, but... Clearly still a lot around the screen. Now, I want to dive into big tech. These are the names that benefited from the AI hype, right? You've got Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, NVIDIA all down. NVIDIA down close to 6% right now. One line of thought, right? These were the names that benefited from all of the money going in because of the AI hype. A lot of folks I'm talking to are saying the sell-off is more of a correction, right? These valuations were already too big, so we're seeing some profit taking. Another line of thought, though, is we are... If we are indeed going into a recession, you move away from these growth stocks. Now, a big driver of this activity is the jobs report from last week, right? The unemployment, it ticked up to 4.3%. That triggers what's known as the SOM rule. Without getting bogged down into the nitty gritty, the SOM rule has been accurate in defining every recession since the early 70s. Mm -hmm. Another metric of note, Goldman Sachs, they just upgraded the risk of a recession from 15 to 25%. I will note they still see it as limited, but it underscores the concern from economists is escalating. Now, zooming out, the sell-off isn't just happening here in the U.S. The global markets are feeling it as well. The Japanese Nikkei closed down over 12 percent. Worst day since 1987. My favorite cryptocurrencies, they're also shedding over $500 billion in the last 24 hours. Mm. So, Brian, yes, investors are concerned. There's a flight to safer assets we're seeing, but we're still off those session lows. So I think it's too early to determine if this is really, you know, recession is real. Ed Taylor was schooling me on the SOM rule last week, <laughs> but I think Claudia SOM herself said, I don't even know if I buy my own rule this week. So Bye. we will see. Combining that with what you reported on in the bond market as well, these are things that we look at historically that do give us a sense. And it may not be we're you know in recession today, but that doesn't mean that it's not coming down the pike. I do think they're important data points. Thank you. Good See, stuff. We're making some rolling bonds cool again. Right. Jackie, we're taking Brian down <laughs> with us. Let's bring in Charles Payne. But I like what Charles is talking about because I'm getting the same sense from talking to people too that they're relatively calm. It's not like they're running for the exits in some ways. That this was anticipated. The question is, you always say, you can't time the market. You don't know when that day is going to be where the bad news is bad news. Can't so. time market. Can time Charles Payne. He's right. up at 2 p.m. Here he is. All righty. Thanks a lot. Great, uh, great conversation, guys. And good afternoon, everyone.